Hey there, friends. Jim Miller coming at you with another episode of the Pre-Ride Show presented by Envy. We're here live in the BWR Expo, which is just about to get rocking, and I get a chance to spend a few minutes with none other than Ian Boswell. Ian, man, thanks for taking the time and sitting yeah. down with us. Welcome to San Diego. Yeah. Well, you provided me shade, and that's all I need. <laughs> down here, so we got to yeah. take care of ourselves, yeah. don't we? Yeah. Uh, man, you've had a big year already. I want to start with uh, the big win in Kansas a few weeks ago. Uh, we happened to be out there following along at the pointy end of the race, and it was absolutely riveting. Um, what goes on in that front end of that group there with that elite? Is there a lot of chit chat? Is there? Is it a little more cohesive? Like, how does it go down? Yeah, I mean, it, the whole race, in a, like as it stands, is just so unique in the sense that you start with so many people and you're in Emporia, you know, similar to this, like you're at an expo and there's like people around, booze, and like you have this energy. And then you know, as the race went on, like it just dwindles. And at one point, it was just five of us. And there's, I mean, we saw you out there here and there, but there's no one else yeah. around. Like you're just like, cool, this is just like a group ride. Yeah. And you know, because it's like it was windy and because we were rolling fast, you know, we weren't chatting a ton. Um, you know, we, we we would speak and, and you know say things here or there, but um, yeah, it was a very unique event. And then to come back into Emporia and like realize, oh, we're racing. I'm like, I'm sprinting this guy for for a win. Um, it's just such a unique, unique It didn't experience. seem like there was a lot of really hardcore attacking going on. It just seemed like more of an attrition race. Is that, is that kind of how it played out? Yeah, and that's what's so funny about and unique about an event like that. It's just like one by one, people were just like, no one's going out the front, people are just going out the back. Yeah. You know, and it's even at the end when it kind of, you know, there was a few attacks, but that was like 20 miles to go. And prior to that, you know, Pete rode hard through that little Egypt section that like created a separation. But, yeah. It's not like, you know, a road race where there's like, you know, a series of attacks and people are surging. It's just like someone just picks up the pace and, you know, people behind just can't can't follow. And it just slowly creates this separation and the group just gets smaller and smaller. And yeah, it's uh, definitely a race of attrition. What was your training like going into that? Was it just massive miles, long endurance miles? Or did you do anything specific to kind of handle the length of that race? Yeah, well, I, that was the one thing I didn't get to do was like a long ride running up to the event. So I had done the rule of three and that was like 100 miles a couple weeks prior. And I finished that and I was like, well, I'm cooked. Like, how am I gonna do 100 miles on top of this? But that was a very different course. It was like technical and there was yeah. mountain bike trails and whatnot. Um, but I would you know, do some reasonably long rides. Like I made one six hour ride in a couple of weeks leading up to it, some five hour <laughs> rides. Um, I was hoping to like be able to squeeze in like one seven or eight hour ride if it was just you know cruisy pace. But I never found the time for it. So yeah, a lot of unknowns, but I think in, in an event like that long, you know, if you can ride hard for five hours, like, as long as you can feel right and hydrate and you know ride smart, I think you can ride for for ten. I mean, I, I don't know, maybe like years of experience racing worked through, like helped, but um, it's like running a marathon. Like you don't go out and train running marathons. Right. So you know if you can like condense your training, just make it a little bit more you know specific to the other characteristics of the event. You know, high speed. You know, eating, drinking a lot, then you should be able to handle the ten hours. Yeah. And you took that great fitness down to Kenya for the great migration race and that project that you're working on yeah. with the Imani racing team down there. Tell us about that because I find that absolutely fascinating. Just the way we're able to um, expand and grow the support, the grow the sport yeah. and down in uh, African nations like that. Yeah. And then, and then ultimately too, we're bringing them back up here to the U S yeah. And it's an awesome project. So, you know, with Wahoo where I'm working, you know, we pitched the idea or they pitched the idea to me like, Hey, do you want to go over and do this, this event? Um, you know, and as we've kind of, the relationship has grown, like we are sponsoring the athletes, we're helping them out with, you know, software and hardware. For, for training, ultimately to bring them back to the U.S. Um, and, you know, traditionally the path for African athletes has been like, you know, try to go to Europe, race on the road, you know, yeah. get on a world tour team, but they don't have a ton of, especially in Kenya, they don't have a ton of great road riding. There's not a huge race scene. But now with the, the boom and the growth of gravel, they're like, why don't we host gravel events? Because they have, you know, the perfect train for it. They have, you know, awesome courses. The athletes train on gravel a lot. Um, so yeah, just an opportunity for myself and Lawrence and Decker and a few other riders to go and race these athletes in Africa also gave them this little bit of home field advantage, you know, because they know the courses, they know the, it's like coming here, like, I have no idea what tire I'm supposed to ride, but they ride those roads all the time. Sure. So they have like this home field advantage, which is, you know, when you look at the growth of gravel, in many ways, it's probably a better avenue for these athletes to find their way to become a, a professional or make a career out of cycling, because there's not this huge process by which to kind of climb the ladder to, to get to the top. You know, they could show up at, you know, BWR, have no points, be a cat five, be super sure. strong and win. And that changes the course of their life versus on the road. You know, it's this long process right. to kind of climb this ladder. So, yeah, it was awesome to be there to race with those athletes to see, you know, just how much they wanted it and how 
really how talented they are, and it's going to be really cool to welcome them to, to SBT, BWR, San, or, uh, Asheville, and then Vermont Overland later this summer. Yeah, you got a packed schedule of that. We can't wait yeah. to see how that plays I'm still, out. Yeah, and they're going to come stay at my house for like a oh, week great. in between. So it's, uh, and, the, and these athletes, you know, they, they love cycling. And it's like, yeah. it's funny to think that, you know, here in California, like, you know, this event will get a lot of, you know, attention here in the U.S., but you don't realize, like, there's this entire community of people in East Africa following this event closer than we think. And it's just amazing it. to realize like, how far, you know, the world of, of gravel has grown. East Africa, we love you. Keep yeah. tuning in. Thank you. Um, you mentioned coming here and all that. Into, well, first question is, um, did it feel good to be back in a stage race mode? Because that's, that's a little more of your background is day after day rather than these big epic yeah. one day shots. Um, it was it was different in the sense that like, we were camping every day yeah. and it was like kind of communal living. Um, so I love that because I've you know, been traveling so much this summer, I haven't been able to like go on a camping trip. So I was able to camp and race. Um, but the back to back stuff definitely, you know, it's kind of what I made my bread and butter off of as a, as a road rider. So yeah. it was cool to be back in that you know, environment where it's day in, day out. And, and then like all gravel events, you know, looking after your own stuff, like every night, like, right, open up my suitcase. Like what food did I bring? You know, what do I need to change tires? And this and it's that. not just show up and eat and ride yeah. and like, yeah, yeah a little more so plug and play. A whole, other, whole other element to it. Um, which I think, you know, there'll be more events like that. I think popping up more, you know, multi-day, multi-day yeah. events. Um, but it's, it's cool to be able to have those and then still, you know, come to these, these one day events because you are able to have such a bigger, attendance at, at a single day event in a multi-day race. And I think what's great too, we were talking about this before we started rolling, was that this is everybody. I got I got people all across the country that can line up with a world tour pro yeah. and compete on the same course, on the same bike, everything like that. Yet there's this intense race going on at the front of it. So it, yeah. it's so much more inclusive and opening. Yeah, well, and I was just speaking to Strickland about tires and it's like, what tire do I ride? I'm like, well, you race until you ride and then you're just riding. And you know, hopefully there's no mechanicals and stuff, but like, I think that's the coolest thing about these events is you know, things happen, mechanicals happen, and that happened on one of the days in Kenya. You know, I had a flat early on, and I am a novice in, in plugging the tire, and I put two in, and I screwed it all up. <laughs> um, so eventually I put a tube in, which I knew how to use, and, you know, it just, at that point, it just turned into a ride. You know, it was a stage race, so I, you know, the next three days I could race. Um, but, you know, that's kind of my mentality at these events. It's like you're racing until you're racing, but if you're not, then there's still so much more to these events than just the pointing of the race. And, you know, of course, it's fantastic to be in the front and riding hard and, you know, trying to go for the win, but if you can like mentally just switch once you're not there, it's like, cool, there's like yeah. thousands of other people here who are riding and if you can help those people out and just chat with people, um, that's kind of the coolest thing about this is, you know, you're always, you're still in the ride, you're still in the event, even if you're not in the front. Have you had a chance to recon the course here in San Diego? Anything no, that, that you like nothing. or anything? Okay, nothing. We're no. going into this totally blind. Yeah, well, I just came in last night. Okay. Um, and I've been pretty busy since Unbound, just with travel, even going to Africa, sure. just in Oregon, visiting my family. So I don't know anything about it. I saw the profile on the Bible. Okay. Uh, I downloaded the head unit or downloaded the map to my head unit. And that's all I know. All right. Yeah. I know you have some videos. There's some videos about, you know, different sections of the course, which I probably should watch. And... Yeah, I'll try to get, maybe I'll try to get to that one. All right. The night before the race, but uh, I don't know. Sometimes I feel like going blind is the best way to go because then you don't worry about it. You just ride in, you know? And, and that's one of the funny things about these events as well is you don't really know until you've done it. Yeah. You know, if, if you've done, you know, BWR several times, you know, okay, I'm going to need this tire and this is my you know, plan with yeah. you know, Nutrition Be careful with Strickland, though. He might lead you the wrong way. He might tell you no, that like a 25 right. slick is good <laughs> and low pro, no pressure, and yeah. yeah. Well, whatever Strickland says, I'm going to go one size. <laughs> I know he's a far <laughs> superior bike handler than I am. Um, but yeah, it, it's just I mean, every race, especially for me this year, because it's my first time doing most of them, it's just uh, you know a learning experience. Right on. So, yeah. I'm sure you still got a lot of uh, friends on the World Tour. Little race r finishing up this week in France. Been following along and keep in touch with those guys over yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, I have been. Um, it's cool to, you know, finally have racing kind of back to normal. And, you know, I mean, last summer I watched a lot of the tour because I was just at home. So I've still been watching, still been speaking to some of my friends who Great. Are, were in the bunch. Um, it's been an exciting race. And I, some people actually just asked me, even Strickland, I was like, hey, do you miss it? Do you have tour envy? I'm like, it's awesome what those guys are doing. But, like, I had my time in that world. And, you know, I appreciate and respect all the, the, those athletes are doing because it's phenomenal to, you know, think in the same amount of time that they've been racing. I've been in Kenya, Vermont, Oregon, and California, yeah. and they're still doing the same race. Yeah. So, yeah, hats off to them, but no, I'm, I'm happy to be happy to be here in California for, uh, it's going to be an awesome race. Well, you did it over there really, really well for a long time at a high level, and we're glad to have you here doing it here on U.S. soil at a really high level, and, and welcome to the big world of gravel, man. Thank you. Right yeah, on. Appreciate it.
Thanks for looking into this episode of the Pre-Ride Show presented by Envy. Ian Boswell sitting down with us. Uh, make sure, please, to subscribe to our YouTube channel and click the little bell so you get notifications of all the episodes that drop throughout the weekend that we're here. Thanks for looking in.